Professor Joseph Seal, who will give his second lecture on uh, index of vector fields in churn classes. Thank you. So today I want to focus on indices of vector fields. But uh, before that, I want to make some comments about just to wrap up what we discussed yesterday about chain classes in general. Okay? And I have uh, written that, I like have made a summary here, so, because if I only speak, things are difficult to understand. And if I want to write that, then it will be half of my lecture. So I have written it, and I will explain it quickly. But it, so, consider a simplicial complex or a manifold which can be triangulated and taken with a triangulation, or can be just a more general C bubble complex decomposition for those who know. So you express the man the manifold as a union of balls which are attached in a nice way. Okay? And consider a complex vector bundle over B. Complex means that the fiber is a complex vector space of dimension K. Well this I assume has the real dimension 2A and this has complex dimension K, which I assume for simplicity K is less than 2A. Okay? Because this is uh, real. This is real and this is complex. So uh, if you look at the fibers here, they are 2K real dimensional vector spaces. Okay? And uh, so whenever you have this situation, you can do exactly the same process as we did yesterday. And you get chain classes which go from dimension C1 up to CK. But each CI lives in the cohomology of dimension 2I with integer coefficients. Okay? And uh, let me just express them, the coefficients, let me make them drawn in a different way. Instead of going from 1 to k, let me write them from, from k minus r plus 1. So I call them like that, where r goes from 1 to k. So when, you, when r is 1, you have the top class, ck. When R is K, you have the lowest class, which is C1. Okay? C0 is defined to be 1 always. Okay? And uh, I just didn't mention that uh, the chain classes are the primary obstruction to have an R frame. And this could be because what primary means the first possibly non zero obstruction. Okay? And uh, let me find that in general, an R frame, if you have a vector bundle of dimension K, and by an R frame of E, we mean a set of R sections of the bundle. When the bundle is a tangent bundle, we are talking a, a set of R vector fields. And the singularities of the frame are the points where these vector fields become linearly dependent, or maybe one of them vanishes. In, in, in any case, they are linearly dependent. Okay. And uh, then you can state a theorem in general. I mentioned that uh, the top trim class is zero if and only if you have a vector field with no singularities. Okay? And uh, somebody asks, uh, is that generalized in some way for all chain classes? Well, the way that statement generalizes is like this. There is Whenever you have a complex vector bundle in this situation, you can always construct an R frame with no singularities up to the skeleton of dimension 2K minus 2R plus 1. Up to that dimension, you can always construct a vector field without a frame with no singularities. So in the particular case, well, and then you can always go one dimension more having at, the, at most one singularity for each phase of dimension 2k minus 2r plus 2. So for example, when we're talking about a manifold and it's a tangent bundle, and you're talking about constructing one vector field, then in, in each cell of, of uh, top dimension, you have one singularity at most. Okay? So that generalizes going to this skeleton. Okay, so this is the general statement. Now, <clears throat> so because of this, one says that this dimension, 2K minus 2R plus 2, is the obstruction, is the, sorry, here I forgot to write the name, the obstruction dimension 
this is, you should say, dimension, the obstruction dimension. for an R frame of E. Because on the one less dimension, you can always construct it. And then when you want to go to this dimension, is when you can find a uh, possibly non-zero obstruction. And that's where the chain class arises. Okay, and uh, the way to define the chain class, I just I mentioned it, I just call it briefly, is whenever you have a 2M minus 2R plus 2 phase, you have your R frame, you can assume that you have your R frame defined on the boundary. Okay, and with no singularities. Now you want to extend it to the interior and you need an obstruction, an integer. You can extend it to the interior if and only if that integer is zero. Now how do you define that integer? Well, this, the two frame, the, the K frame, or R frame on the boundary gives you a map from the boundary to the stiffer manifold of R frames in CN. Why R frames in CN? Because over here, you have a vector bundle that restricted to this phase is trivial. So restricted to this phase, you have the phase times CK. Okay? And if you have a section, that means that a point Z goes to Z, comma, a vector. Then you can forget the Z. You can just project to the fiber. So locally, a section is just like a function from the boundary where you have it to the fiber, and the fiber is CK. Sorry, and the fiber is the set of two frames in CN. Okay? So you have the, the frame defined on the boundary, which is given by this map, and you want to know if that extends to the interior. And as I said before, just by general topology, elementary topology, this extends to the interior if and only if this map is non homotopic, because the interior is the cone over the boundary. Okay, so the question is if this map is non topic or not. And I say that these maps actually correspond, the, the homotopy classes are, color, are in bijection with the integers. And that's why I say that the, this index that just says is like a Poncarehoff index. But really, there are different reasons to say that it is like a Poncarehoff index. I cannot go, I don't want to go into detail into that, but there are deep reasons. And just let me give you one example, which I'm going to use later today. Suppose you are in the case where you are considering a manifold, you are considering its tangent bundle if you want, okay? And you want to consider two linear independent vector fields, okay? Then we will, uh, you, you take a, a triangulation of the manifold, if you face, take a phase of dimension 2n minus 2, in that case that is the obstruction dimension, you can have it at the boundary. The boundary is diffeomorphic to a circle, to a sphere of dimension 2n minus 3. Okay? So you have a map from, the, from this sphere of dimension 2n minus 3 into the stiffer manifolds of two per frames in Cn. And you are asking if you can extend that to the interior. Okay? Or, or, or how to measure. Now, I, I explained yesterday that this manifold it's a fiber bundle over S2n minus 1 with fiber S2n minus 3. And the, the, the projection is here you have a two frame, you forget the second vector, the second section, you just project, consider the first one that gives you a map into here. And then it's easy to see that the curve of that the fiber of that projection is, is this sphere. Okay? But now look, look what a nice thing we have. Now you have your map from the boundary, which is S2 and minus 3, into this guy. Now here, this is an, a bundle over this. So you have a sphere of this dimension, and over each sphere, you have a fiber, which is a sphere like this. Now take one of those fibers, choose one, fix. That's a manifold of this dimension here. Now look at the image of this sphere. That gives you something of this dimension at most. Just for co-dimensional reasons, because here you have more of the, you have this co-dimension. For co-dimensional reasons, you can move the image so that that image doesn't intersect this fiber. Just for dimensional reasons, to reality. Now, if if the image is missing one fiber, that means that the image 
is contained and the base is S2 and minus 1. If you are missing one fiber, that means that you can remove one point and get down and take the fiber. Well then the image is containing R2 and minus 2 times the fiber. Well then this space is contractible. You can just project into here. Okay? So at the end what you're having is for each phase of dimension 2 and minus 2, you have a map from its boundary, which has this dimension, into the fiber which has this other dimension. And then it's like a Pokarekov index. The index we have is just the degree of this map. Okay? So that's why I say it is very much like a Pokarekov index. It's not like a generalized Pokarekov index. That's in the case 2n, but the same argument is just more complicated, but the same argument works again. Okay? And one final remark. <clears throat> and why considering complex vector bundles? Everything seems to work for the real, for real vector bundles. Yes, almost everything works for real vector bundles. <coughs> the, all the process works exactly the same. The difference is that I am using that for these different manifolds of complex frames in CN, all the low dimensional chromotopy groups vanish, and the first non zero group is isomorphic to the integers. And that's why we are getting cosmology classes with integer coefficients. When we do that over the fields, first we have to consider oriented vector bundles. In the complex setting, the complex structure gives you orientation for free. So you don't have to ask for that. But second, in this real case, you have that the homotopy groups of these different manifolds that appear are zero in all dimensions up to one level. But then the first non-zero group is sometimes the integers, but sometimes the integers over two, set two depending on the part. So you don't get something with integer coefficients. Then to have a coherent theory, all these obstructions are taken with coefficients, homology with coefficients in set over two. And what you get as what we know as the Stephen Whitney classes. Okay? So that is to, to wrap up just in this talk. So now let's go into indices of vector fields for singular varieties. Today and tomorrow I'll speak about that, and then the last day on Friday I'll come back to just as an introduction to chain classes for singular varieties. That will be the topic of Jan Paul's Brazilian lecture lectures next week. So I will just give a, an introduction to that. But today, today and tomorrow we'll speak about indices of vector fields. the origin into the origin, the homomorphic function. lectures that this is a cone, locally a cone. Okay, so this is locally a cone. Okay. And uh, I want to consider vector fields, germs of vector fields here. Germs means that I'm only interested in what happens within a sufficiently small ball, and if two vector fields Coincide in a small ball, for me they are the same. I take a clear list class. Okay? So I don't care what happens in the far away. So I consider a vector field here, and I want to consider vector fields in a neighborhood which are, contain, which are continuous vector fields in a neighborhood. Since uh, we are in a small neighborhood, it makes sense to speak of continuous vector fields. And then I want them to be so that they are zero at the singular point. 
they don't have well, I'm restricted to V, they are tangent to V. Away from the singular point, this is smooth, so it makes sense of speaking of tangent vector fields. So I want the vector fields to be tangent and with an isolated singularity here, no more singularities. And then the question is V vector field. B, C. So it means everything I said before. What is or what should be the <coughs> index of B? Suppose for a second that there, there were no critical point, that this were a regular point. Okay? Then if uh, there is no, there no critical point, we have something like this, with the origin, everything is smooth. And if we have a vector field defined on the neighborhood, then what do we do? We take the tangent bundle, we say this is you, we take the tangent bundle of you. Okay? And uh, we have a section of this bundle, and we identify it with u times cm. And then we can project to cm, and a section, the top field means a section here, which is actually regarded as a map here. And then we restrict it to a small sphere around the point. We have the degree of that map, and that is the Polkere index as I defined yesterday, okay? Siempre no, yes. No, 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 no. No, because I'm taking the tangent one. So u is a neighborhood in v. So let me, but u, because u field, a broken set, in the empty space intersected with f minus one of, let me say, a regular value, okay? Okay? So this is a way to this is how we, if you have this sub, sub manifold, this is how you will de define the usual Poincare local index. Now here you can try to do, do the same. You have a vector field, you, you know you have a conical structure, you take the intersection with a small sphere. This is K equals a small sphere of dimension 2n plus 1 sphere intersected with V. This is a small manifold of dimension 2n minus 1. It's called the link of the singularity. This is well defined. Its topology does not depend on the size of the sphere we choose. So each sphere you want sufficiently small gives you the same link. So you can just the vector field to the link and take the vector field restricted there. But then what? You cannot take the tangent bundle of V. Because at this point, here you have tangent bundle of V. But if you take the tangent bundle of V restricted to this neighborhood, there is not such a bundle at this point. So it makes no sense. No. You can take the tangent bundle of the ambient space, which is smooth, and restrict it here. But then, you, this is a vector in C n plus 1. And you get a map from the link into the unit stream in C n plus 1. But this has too much dimension. Every map from a low dimensional manifold into the sphere is not homotopic. So your, your index will be always 0. And it's not very interesting. So you have to do something. What do you do? Okay. There's not a unique answer. It depends on what properties of the index you want, uh, what 
mean, you can define anything you want, provided you can do something interesting with it. <laughs> okay? So, let's give a... So today, I'm going to speak about one index to... Uh, whatever, today I'm going to speak about basically two, three indices, which all are more or less... Which, in this setting, they all coincide. Okay? And tomorrow I'm going to speak about a different one, which is true. Okay. So the thing is, I'm going to speak to this, is, is, it is known as the GSB index. This is an index that I, I started, I worked on it. It was somehow a natural outcome of my PhD thesis a few years ago. And uh, <laughs> They published in 1987 for the case n equals 2. I will show you that case. And then go, that, that is what the, the G, the S is for me. And then later, uh, somehow it didn't look very interesting, I didn't know to, what to do with it. But then the discussions with uh, Gomez Mont and Berkowski, we published an article, I think it was in 1991. We started working in about 87, 86, the article came in here. And uh, then that's uh, how I mean, we studied with more detail, deeper, and more generality, and then it became known as the GSB index. And exactly in this area. And the definition is very simple. We come back to this setting. And uh, let me assume, and uh, let me assume V is irreducible. If M is the in any frame is one. For any lighter than one, this is automatic. Locally, locally, locally. So it has, you have only one branch. If you have more branches, you can discuss that, but uh, you have to be careful. And there's one point in which can be one point one has to do so. But there's a so you have this similar variety, you have the vector field. Now, as I said, you can take a the vector field restricted to the link. But that gives you a map to the sphere and it's not interesting for dimensional reasons. Yet, we all know that if you have a, in the real case, if you have a differential function and you take a non-critical level, we know that the gradient <coughs> is always orthogonal to the non-critical level, okay? In the holomorphic setting, what you have is a, even a holomorphic function, and a, if you look at the regular points, then the, the, the conjugate gradient vector field is orthogonal to the hypersurface, to the level surfaces. Okay? So at, at each point here, you, you have the vector field you are looking at, which is, it depends on which vector field you are looking at. But then at each point, at each point, you have the gradient vector field effect, okay, the conjugate. And this is orthogonal to the hypersurface. <coughs> and this is canonical. Whenever you have a function, this is defined canonically, and it's defined everywhere except at the singular point, and it's everywhere orthogonal to the hypersurface. Okay? So now, given any, your choice of vector field, you have automatically a, a two frame. This is tangent to the hypersurface, this is orthogonal. So automatically you have a two frame. So you get a map. <coughs> so get a map. D comes the gradient of it, which goes from the link into the steeper manifold of two frames in C and plus one. And this is a manifold of three dimension to any other minus one. Okay? And now these maps, just as we saw here, for this dimensional reason, these maps do have a degree, I mean, like a Poncarehoff index in, in, in this sense. So by definition, the GSB index of B at zero is by definition the degree of this map. And that's a okay. image. So what properties?
some from basic properties.
we can think of it in the following way. <coughs> Take the mean of the mean of fibers. So you have a special fiber, F minus one of zero, and then you take the mean of fibers, which are the non-critical levels of the fiber of the function. Okay? So if you have a family of manifolds which are degenerating to the special fiber. Now you can think that on each of these manifolds you have a vector field with isolated singularities. And as you move the fiber, that vector field moves to the nearby fiber with isolated singularities. But then all these singularities get closer and closer and closer and closer. And then when the fiber degenerates to the special one, all of those singularities collapse into a singular point. So when you are in the pink one, you see only one singularity. But when you move to the nearby fibers, you have many. Okay? So you, you, you can think of this index in that way. A second property. Vector field. This gradient implies its index GSD is 1 plus minus 1 to the n times mu. Mu is the middle number that we also mentioned this morning. Okay? And why is that? Well, because this is the only characteristic of the mean of fiber. And if the vector field is radial, radial means that it is everywhere transversal to the intersection with a sphere. If the vector field is radial, then when you move it to the nearby fiber, it's going to be your vector field on the mean of fiber, a vector field which is everywhere transversal to the boundary. And then the general theorem says that when you have a vector field or a manifold with boundary, and everywhere it is transversal to the boundary pointing outwards, then its total index in the interior is the only Poincare characteristic. Okay? So, in particular, we have this relation. Let me mention just a few more things. You, you have brought me to the table. Three. This can be defined. The, the usual Poincare index can be defined, can be thought of as you have the chain class and you are just, just this is philosophy and somehow you are localizing a contribution of, of the top chain class at the point. You are using the vector field to localize a contribution to the only characteristic at that point. That point is, thanks to the vector field, is giving you a contribution localized at the singular point. And then when you took Take it, localize at all the singularities, you get the complete or the characteristic for the top. Okay? In general, that's the philosophy of uh, what is called residues for polymorphic formations. And, uh, well, and more, more generally, uh, and also to, to, for chain classes, using that idea, the local or the record in, uh, sorry, and chain classes can be defined via chain rate theory in terms of connections. So using all that machinery, you can the usual index can be defined using connections, <coughs> using chain rate theory. Well, the same happens here. You can use can use chain rate theory to define an index. for vector fields on hypersurfaces or complete intersections. The same definition I gave for hypersurface singularities both for isolated complete intersection singularities. Now, the, this is also defined in that setting. The nice thing, a nice thing of this vector field is that it is defined on manifolds, or sorry, on varieties which are complete intersections even with non-isolated singularities. That's what I say. You, you, are, you look at compact connected components of a singular set, and for each compact connected component, you get a number, an index. <coughs> and that's called the virtual index. 
that was defined by the new Lehman, Martin Suarez, and Tatsuo Suwa. They did it for polymorphic vector fields, and then Suwa and myself did an extension, which was more or less easy for continuous vector fields. And you get a, a virtual index defined using differential geometry. And uh, so it has several advantages. One disadvantage is that it is not so easy to define. But it's, it, is, it is computable. And when you have isolated singularities, it coincides with the GSD index. Okay. Now, also for one more interesting thing is that uh, I said that the usual Poncarejo index when you have a holomorphic vector field, it can be defined in terms of the dimension of a certain algebra I mentioned yesterday. This is the dimension of the ring of holomorphic functions at the point divided by the ideal generated by the functions that define the vector field. It's a very nice expression, allows you to do, do many things. For example, a corollary of that, the index of a holomorphic vector field is always greater or equal to zero. And actually, if you have a singularity, it's greater or equal to one. So it's very nice. For continuous vector fields, you don't know. For example, take this. So suppose you have a weighted homogeneous singularity. You have a vector field, you have a, a, a sister action that we should explain today. You have a sister action that defines a vector field. At each point, you have the speed vector field, so to say. Okay, so you have a, a vector field, and that vector field is everywhere transversal to the link. Okay, so if you start with a weighted homogeneous singularity, you have a canonical holomorphic vector field given by the sister action, and that is radial. So you see, its index is this. So if you are, for example, in dimension two, the middle number is always positive. So this, this index is almost always negative. So even for holomorphic vector fields, this can be negative. Okay. And I'll come to that, that point later. Okay. But uh, even so, one very nice property is that you can define it using algebra. And that's a very, very deep and difficult story. And one has what is called the homological index. Okay, that's defined in a complete generality of the vector fields on arbitrary normal isolated singularities, any dimension, hypersurfaces or not, in full generality. But when the germ is an isolated complete intersection, it coincides with the GSB index. Okay, but that's even in general. This is not. And one more property, very interesting, is interesting relations. Uh, one dimension of holomorphic relations on complex. So this is, this was very much explained by Marco Vonella. And in the penalty by Hanedani and Sumer. In the note, I will not say more because I don't have time, but in the notes I gave, there is something that, I, I say something about that, and I give this reference, you can see that. But basically, just a few words. I still. Just a few words. <laughs> so what you have N complex surface.
and, and neighborhood of B U C A and tangent to V away from the zero point. Okay? So exactly the same setting as before, except that I'm not asking for a hypersurface. Any variety. With a isolated singularity. Now consider the working space, you can take the restriction to V. Okay? And you can take, well, when you speak, speak of R forms on V, you actually don't care how they behave away from P, from the variety. If two forms coincide on V and they are different away, but you only live on V, for you they are the same. Okay? So when we say, of, when we consider differential holomorphic forms on V, we mean equivalence classes. Okay? Mm -hmm. So now consider so let omega R V to draw the space of R forms on V. Now uh, well <coughs> Whenever you have an R form and you have one vector field that gives you what is called a con an R minus one form by contraction, what does it mean? A P form is evaluated at this point on, on R vectors. Okay? But if you, are, if you already have one vector which is given and fixed, then whenever you have R minus one vectors, you have a group something here. So you get an R minus one form, okay? So when we look at your very dimension I, of the information, the vector field gives you by contraction, what do you mean? I minus one form. And then you can contract again, and you keep going until you get to the zero forms, which are the functions. And then you can put a zero here. You can start whenever you want. You can start in dimension T. So I start with the n forms, n is dimension of V. And I put a zero here, and I put this. Okay? <clears throat> then one can show that the, it's easy to show that if, if you take contraction one, and then you contract the same form. If you look at the image and then contract again, you go to zero because the forms are alternating. Mm -hmm. So this forms what is called a uh, complex. And then you can look, whenever you have the complex, you can look at the homology of the, of the complex, which means that at each level you look <coughs> at the image and you divide it by the curve. And you have the homology groups of the complex. Those homology groups have finite dimension. So let H I. 
So this gives a very nice geometric interpretation. This gives a very powerful algebraic machinery and has the advantage of being defined in full generality. Yes, sir. Yes. Minus one to the minus one to the n. Yes, thank you. Before continuing, let me give an example. <laughs> In this context, the currency the forms of the gems of forms are. Yes, gems of forms and equivalent in terms of you take any forms in the space, you take this restriction, and two forms are equivalent if they coincide with the restriction to be. That's what you mean by the omega. That's what I mean by this. And something to check here is that if you have two forms in the ambient space, which are equivalent, which are equal to the restricted to V, and when you apply this construction, the form here does not depend on the choice of representative. Okay? So in other words, contraction is well defined in the smooth ambient space. One has to show that it is well defined in the singular variety. What is this? Let me say a few words about the truth. It's quite interesting and very difficult. I mean, it's very deep. Very easy for the GSV index and deep for the homological index. It's both indices preserve what we know calls a law of conservation. The 
No, pues. What is that? You have singular variety. You have a vector field here. And because it is tangent to the variety and you have an isolated singularity, you know that every vector field like that must be singular at the singular point. Why? Just because a vector field gives you a local one parameter family of diffeomorphisms. And if you have an isolated singularity, that point has to be fixed. That means that the vector field has to be similar to the similar point. So, so, so whatever, in whatever way you, you perturb your vector field, it's always going to be similar at the similar point. Okay? Well, now, if you know Javier, let me explain things the way he does. Now you come into the pot, you look around, you look at the vector field, and then suddenly you read, you shout, Fire! And then when all the vector, the, all the vectors move away and they escape. Okay? So this singular point, some of the similarities which were concentrated here, they managed to escape away. So now you are going to get new similarities nearby. But you are going to have some similarity here. Okay? At this point you are in the regular part. So at this point, each singularity has its local Poincaré Hopf index. Okay. So conservation of number means that no matter what you do, if you count your GSB or homological index of the point, you perturb, and then you see the local indices in the nearby points, and you add them up to the one you have, that number is preserved. Okay. <coughs> Then once you have this another easy corollary is that the difference in the GSD minus index homological does not depend on the choice. Depends on the choice of vector field. This index depends on the choice of vector field, but their difference is independent of the choice. It's going to be some number fixed, which will depend only on the variety you are. And on the definition of the this. Okay. It's not obvious that this implies this, but it's, it, it, this is actually is deep but easy. You have to think of this for 15 minutes, and then you will say, ah, oh, yes, okay? It's not easy, it's not obvious, but it's not easy. Proving this, you need to work quite a lot. This now, this is, you just need some thinking, and some explanation. Whenever you have a, 
and a variety. You can also go on vector field in which they are equal. So we have vector field. If you want to compare it, this is you have to be able to, to compute. Uh, and, and then and then find a canonical choice. So this is what the is not. Surfaces, one is one with von Bonde, von Bodner, and Evelyn for complete intersections. And then and they also use the final canonical choice of the protein. Set to n 
for minus partial of f with respect to set to n so to n minus 1. That's holomorphic, we agree. If this has an isolated critical point at zero, this vector field is never zero except at the origin. Okay, by definition. Critical points are where only partial they will be derivative is So the only similarity of this vector field is at the origin. What else? What happens if you take the differentiation of f and you evaluate it on d? That's an identical decision. That means that. Uh, Plus function d of d, d that's 2. Right? And the second d that's 1. Mm -hmm. Sorry? The first coefficient of the vector d. Sorry. Sorry. Yes, thank you. You have to forget it. No, no, yes. Okay. Yeah. You, you change them by pairs. Then when you take this, you get that this differential. The volatile of D vanishes identically everywhere. This means R E D is tangent to all the fibers F minus one of D. In particular, it gives you a vector field standing to this one. Okay, so then what is the GSV index? We know it is the Poincare index of an extension to the middle fiber. But it extends to, the, to all nearby fibers with no singularities. So the GSV index is zero. Okay, and then you take the formula for the homological index, you do computations, in this case are very simple, and it is zero. Okay? But when you add 2n plus 1, you have to do something. You, you cannot just, here you need an even number of variables. So you, you have to do a, a very clever trick and you do the same. Okay? So you have these two indices and sides. And something very nice is that this one is defined always. This is only defined for isolated complete intersections. Okay? And just, I still have a few minutes. No? Five, no? I I don't understand the uh, why the the singular points of the vector fields of the fiber near the singular yeah. concentrate. I don't. I don't understand why. Geometrically, you can think of this. So, so you have a vector field that has a point and take an extension to the ambient space. Okay. It's going to have some singularities in the ambient space. Okay. Suppose you can extend it in such a way that it is tangent, you can extend it holomorphically in such a way that it is tangent to the nearby fibers. You cannot always do it. Suppose you can do it. Okay. Then you are going to have the zero center of the earth vector field in the ambient space. It's going to be an analytic set. So you are going to have a similar variety. We are going to have the similarities of the vector field in the ambient space. Okay? That's going to be an analytic set that contains this point. So that's in the ambient space. Now, look at, at, the, at each fiber, which are the zeros of the vector field on the fiber. They are going to be the intersection of the fiber with this analytic set. So for each point, this is going to have a finite number of branches, and each of these is going to set this fiber in, in, in one point, or at finitely many points. And those points are going to be the similarities in the nearby fiber. But as you get closer to the similar fiber, 
they will collapse here. Of course, you similarities that go away. If you are here, you don't, you don't look at them. Those are not important for you. You look at those who somehow are being attracted by the singularity. Okay, that, that answers you? Thanks. No, I mean, it's a, whenever you have a complex, you have a, the homology of the complex. And uh, in this case, because uh, for algebraic geometry reasons, because uh, you have an isolated singularity, and the depth of it has an isolated singularity, the, the homology has to, to, uh, to be finite dimension. Okay. It is not another non No, it, this is very much uh, like what is known in algebraic geometry, like a consul complex. When you have space, this is smooth, the consul, uh, this is a consul complex, and those are very used in algebraic geometry. Any other questions? Okay. Thanks. Before we leave to the coffee, uh, someone